G'day everyone, welcome back. Today I want to have a look at the background to the Crusades. What were the events that led up to the Crusades? Because Crusades in the medieval Europe were absolutely unheard of. Never before had a unification of Christian Europe come together in this way. And the, the realities of things like the Council of Clermont, which brought around about, some historians suggest, around about 100,000 Christian warriors together, had just never ever been contemplated before. been seriously looked at of how to move an army from Western Europe all the way to the Middle East. A journey that would take many of them several years. How do you feed? How do you sustain? How do you maintain an army of this kind? How do you equip them? All of this kind of stuff. These were big questions that had never been asked before. However, I'm wanting to look at what were the, some of the circumstances that led up to the Crusades. The Christian Church and Christian Europe was generally considered uh, peaceful. Well, okay, we actually know that's not the case. Um, the Christian Church definitely was a church that taught peace and love and empathy and togetherness, but we also know that many Christian kingdoms warred between themselves. You only need to take a look at Anglo-Saxon England and look at what happened, the, the relationship with the, the seven Anglo-Saxon kingdoms and their relationship with each other uh, to see so much warring between the Christians. If we look at it seriously, many of the so-called Vikings would have actually been Christians as well. Certainly from the 850s onwards, um, the conversion of the, of the North was already well underway, and we've covered that in a different video. Let's see if we can have a link up here. The Crusades are largely misunderstood and a very, very emotive subject for many people. A lot of people consider them as being a war between Christianity and the Muslim world. This is not true. This is a myth, and it's a myth that has inspired hatred um, for such a long time and it's been carried to the highest ranks of society. Uh, in 9-11 Bill Clinton actually blamed the Crusades to an extent when he talked about um, the, the planes flying into the towers and so on. Um, so let's take a look at some of the actual historical incidences that were occurring at the time. Now I have a list here, I'm going to refer to that if that's okay. Radio. So we have um, Commodore Alexius broke away from um, the, the Christian church in around about 1045 or so. Um, there was a, a number of events that kind of led up to that. But much later on he petitions... Um, what was at the time, I believe, Pope Gregory for assistance, um, which was granted by uh, Pope Urban II at the Council of Clermont in 1095. The Crusades, though, were a result of over 450 years of continuous bloody Muslim aggression through military means and very much about uh, conversion by the sword. I'm going to explore some of this in far more detail as we go along. I really do want to have a look at the roles of people like um, Salahuddin and Muhammad and other people. I'm going to try to do that from the most objective way that I can possible. 
um, because uh, you know it, it, it's not as I'll say it, this is such an emotive subject for so many people but let's uh, let's get into this a bit more the Crusades uh, as much as anything were declared uh, basically on, on three grounds number one um, it was to provide Christians with safe passage to the and it was to provide Christians with safe passage to and from the Holy Land. Second, it was to retake Christian lands, and third, it needed to be a just war, a holy war, um, and something that could be um, authorized by the Pope himself. So, in six. Uh, 35 we see the fall of the first Christian city in 638 we see the fall of Jerusalem that is the fall of Christian Jerusalem to the Muslims many of the the countries in the Middle East were Christian at this time and, and just as an example modern-day Syria Iran Iraq and Egypt and Turkey were all Christian lands back in the medieval period in 642, Egypt fell. Egypt, as I say, was a Christian land. In 652, Italy was raided by the, uh, the Muslim forces. In 668, you have the siege of Constantinople, Constantinople uh, being a, a major Christian city. In fact, it was the, the home base of the Eastern Christian Empire, and it was um, the capital of the Byzantine Empire. In 715, Syria falls, Syria again being a Christian nation. In 732, France is under sustained purposeful attack by Muslim forces and is in fact held in... in these raids are held in check by a very famous Christian called uh, Charles, the Hammer, Charles the Hammer Morel at the Battle of Pontieu. And uh, Charles... Morel was in fact the grandfather of Charlemagne. So this was very much about the Carolingian and Merovingian dynasties uh, being able to sustain Christianity in Europe. And in fact, Christians today have so much to be grateful to um, people like uh, Charles Morel for. In 846, we see Rome itself being attacked. And in fact, many, many, many other cities and countries were invaded by the Muslims from this period onwards, culminating in what was possibly um, the biggest atrocity of its time in this nature. Uh, keywords there. So what had happened here, what I'm talking about, in 1062, a large group of Christian pilgrims, thereabouts of 12,000 or so historians believe, were on their way to the Holy Land. Uh, this is an unarmed group of pilgrims. Christian pilgrims rarely took very much with them. That was kind of the point of the pilgrimage. And they went to the Christian sites. Now this was very much something that Christians kind of needed to do in the course of their lifetime. And this pilgrimage was um, slaughtered really by Muslim forces. And it's believed that perhaps as much as a third of them were killed. News of this got back to uh, the Pope, and the Pope realised something chronic had to change, something massive had to, to recur. Really what then happened, I guess, um, Pope Urban had prayed on his petition from uh, Alexius, the, uh, the leader of the Byzantines, and Pope Urban was trying to consider you know, how best to respond. A lot of historians believe that uh, Pope Urban had envisaged a, a small force of Norman knights being able to stave off the, um, the Seljuk Turk cavalry. Uh, this would seem logical, but um, the Pope went to hold what became known as the Council of Clermont, and in 1095, and he preached to what was believed to be thereabouts of maybe 80,000 or more Christians. Um, and he, he gave this very kind of invigorating 
um, sermon, very much seeking assistance and support from the Christian warriors to try and retake the Holy Land and to retake Christian lands. A lot of people misunderstand this and they see it as a chance to raid and pillage and plunder. And this is really not the case. And if you read the, the history of the Crusades, and that's absolutely not what happened, um, this was a chance for religious unification. As I said earlier, um, the eastern and western sides of Christianity had had a very distinctive split in the uh, first part of the 11th century. And now what had happened was Alexius had gone to the Pope and he'd sought counsel and advice and support and assistance. And Pope Urban had seen this as an opportunity to unify Christianity and to have a common purpose. Uh, and, and this was a device um, seen by many Christian warriors as a device or a means to prove themselves not only as, as Christians but as warriors and also as, as to be able to assist their kind of Christian brethren. So I guess what I'm trying to demonstrate here is, is this is all kind of fact, you know, this is all what's happened. And we have this um, very long period, 450 years worth of um, very sustained aggression by the Muslims, um, driving Christians away, driving Christians out, creating um, a, a lot of hardship for the Christians, and um, something had to happen. If, if nothing had happened, if the First Crusade hadn't been called, then I believe absolutely we would have ended up with um, the Muslims really taking over Europe. Because Muslims were pushing into uh, what is today Italy, they were pushing into do what is today France and Germany, um, and modern day Spain and so on, modern day Turkey, uh, and there was the direct threats uh, onto um, the actual European soil. So there we go. Um, this is the, the situation that confronted the Christians and I think the, the ideas and I think the ideology behind the First Crusade was very much um, a, a logical kind of re um, answer to the problems that had been solved. A lot of people ask actually, um, why hadn't the Crusades happened much earlier? Why did this go on for 450 years? Um, when we think about it, there was a theologian called Augustine, uh, who in the 4th century AD had actually talked about a just war and the circumstances that created a just war. Uh, obviously, I think referring to uh, um, the brutality that can be caused by, I guess, um, political infighting within um, the Germanic tribes and state powers and this kind of thing. So the concept of a just war wasn't new. But I guess the reason that the Crusades themselves hadn't occurred 450 years earlier is perhaps that the wars with the Scandinavians had very much tied up most of their resources and I really don't think there was the resources or the, um, the techniques and the, or the procedures or the equipment to sort of answer the Crusades. And it really wasn't until the, you see the evolution of the Norman knight that we really start to see Europe's uh, answers beginning to form. And I really think it was down to Pope Urban II who had a unique ability to bring together the leadership of um, Christian Europe at the time and say, look, we have a common purpose here, we have a common threat, and it requires a unified response. Now, it is true that the vast majority of the Crusaders were from um, what had been the Merovingian uh, uh, sort of empires, so modern-day France, modern-day Germany, modern-day Italy, those kind of countries. Um, certainly other countries, all other countries in, in Europe played a part, but the vast majority of warriors did in fact come from Francia. Um, 
But we'll talk about a lot of that stuff as we get into it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'll catch you in my next video.